We began the course with a market structure called Perfect Competition, where many small firms produced identical products in an environment where new firms could enter and old firms could exit freely. And in that environment, we found that price will be equal to marginal cost. We then jump to the other extreme of a perfect monopoly, a single firm that's producing an output that has no close substitutes outside of the industry, and that's protected by barriers to entry so no new firms could enter and compete. And in that environment, we found that the monopoly price is going to be above marginal cost. But we said that most of the real world lies between those extremes, and we tried to find some way of filling that continuum between perfect competition and perfect monopoly. And one way to do that was to think of the market structure called oligopoly. An oligopoly is a market structure where there are barriers to entry. No new firms can enter the industry, but the industry has more than one firm in it. The firms in the industry are producing the same product, but there are no close substitutes outside of the industry. So an oligopoly is a lot like a monopoly, except it has more than one firm. And we found that when you have two firms in an oligopoly, and those two firms use quantity as their strategic variable, so they engage in quantity or no competition, then those two firms together will produce more output than the monopoly would. And as a result, the price will be below the monopoly price. And as the number of firms in the oligopoly increases, the total output the industry in the industry is going to rise. And therefore, the price is going to keep falling. And so as we increase the number of firms in the oligopoly, we move from the extreme of monopoly to the extreme of perfect competition. When there are lots and lots of firms in the oligopoly, then price converges to marginal cost. But there was a second kind of competition we also introduced, and that was price competition. which we first introduced in the Bertrand model. The problem was that when we introduced this price competition into an oligopoly, we found that as soon as there was a second firm in the industry, price became equal to marginal cost. So we immediately jumped by just going from one firm to two firms, from perfect monopoly to the perfectly competitive outcome. So it didn't help us fill that continuum between monopoly and perfect competition. And just to remind you of the underlying logic, remember that when price becomes a strategic variable, firm one is going to choose a price, firm two is going to choose a price, they'll face some marginal cost of producing output. And if they were to match their prices, they'd end up on the 45 degree line. If we then think of firm two's best response to prices for firm one, we would say, well, if the price is below marginal cost, firm two is just going to price at marginal cost because it wouldn't want to price below marginal cost and make a loss. So it's simply going to price at marginal cost if firm one charges a price below marginal cost. But as soon as firm one prices above marginal cost, it's going to want to underbid firm one just a little bit so it can capture the whole market. If it matched the price, it would end up on the 45 degree line. If it underbids the price, it would end up just below. So for any price above marginal cost, firm two is gonna wanna price just below where firm one is pricing. And see, so we, we got this best response function for firm two. And similarly, we get a best response function for firm one that says, as long as firm two prices below marginal cost, we'll just price at marginal cost. But as soon as firm two prices above marginal cost, we're gonna to wanna to underbid that price. Matching the price would get us to the 45 degree line. We'll wanna stop just short of it. So we'll end up with a best response function that looks like this. And the two best response functions intersect right here. They intersect where price is equal to marginal cost. And that becomes the equilibrium in the Bertrand model. So the price competition is so fierce that as soon as you have two firms, we end up at the competitive 
outcome of price being equal to marginal cost. We're now going to introduce a second feature on top of price competition, and that we'll call product differentiation. So we're going to assume that the two firms are producing products that aren't identical. They're in the same family of products, but they're somewhat different. So think, for example, of Coke and Pepsi. They're both cola products, but they're somewhat different to consumers. And some people really like Pepsi and some people really like Coke. So now if we think about price competition between Coke and Pepsi, say Coke is firm one and Pepsi is firm two, they both have some marginal cost of producing Coke and Pepsi. And they'll end up on the 45 degree line if they match each other's prices. But now, because some people really like Pepsi, Pepsi is going to be able to sell product at a price above marginal cost, even if Coke gives its product away for free. So as a result, they'll be able to price above marginal cost, even if the price of good one, the price of Coke, is zero. And as Coke increases its price, Pepsi will be able to increase its price. So we'll get some best response function that looks like this. And similarly, Coke is going to be able to sell some Coke because some people really prefer Coke to Pepsi. And even if Pepsi is given away for free, they're going to buy Coke at a price above marginal cost. As Pepsi raises its price, Coke's going to be able to raise its price. And we'll get a best response function for Coke that looks something like that. The more differentiated the products are, the more these two can diverge from each other. And they'll intersect at a price that's above marginal cost. So now we get the result that price is above marginal cost under Bertrand price competition because the products in the oligopoly are differentiated. We could say that product differentiation is softening price competition. And this is going to give us a way to fill that continuum. By lowering barriers to entry, we'll get more firms entering this oligopoly. And as more firms enter, there'll be more competition, more price competition within the industry. But within, but within an environment of product differentiation, they'll still be able to price above marginal cost, but less and less so the more those barriers to entry come down. So as the barriers come down in an environment where you differentiate your products and you compete on price, price is going to continue to be above marginal cost, but it's going to fall. And as those barriers go away, we're going to end up with price equal to marginal cost. So we'll have a second way of filling that continuum only this time, price will be the strategic variable and firms will differentiate their products along the way.